The Haunting of Bly Manor is Netflix's second haunting series from horror director Mike Flanagan, following 2018's Haunting of Hill House. This series is a completely different story, entirely separated from its haunting predecessor, and is based on a mixing of a number of horror stories by Henry James. These include, most notably, his 1898 novella The Turn of the Screw, but also includes elements of two short stories named The Jolly Corner and The Romance of Certain Old Clothes, which is a lot to fit into one story. Bly Manor brings back a number of cast members from Hill House, including Victoria Pedretti, Henry Thomas, and Oliver Jackson Cohen. Carla Gugino and Katie Siegel also return in mystery roles I can't tell you about yet. In addition to six new cast members, we'll get to some of them later, Bly Manor features a special appearance by one Greg Sestero, appearing in his fourth television role ever. That's right, as of the making of this video, his Wikipedia wasn't even updated yet. Could this establish the room within the haunting cinematic universe? Unlikely. Sadly, those hoping for a ghostly cameo by Tommy Wiseau will be disappointed. You gotta tear me apart, Lisa! Anyway, Victoria Pedretti stars in the lead role as Danny, the nanny of Bly Manor. When the series begins, she is hired by Henry Wingrave to care for his niece and nephew who live at Bly Manor, with three other people hired to care for them and the grounds. These include Hannah, the housekeeper, Jamie, the groundskeeper, and Owen, the chef. And thus, haunting stuff happens. If you've watched his work before, you know that Mike Flanagan likes to use ghost stories to explore things like grief and depression. Bly Manor tries a similar trick, but it just doesn't work nearly as well as it did in Hill House. Danny is haunted by a traumatic past and a ghost who sadly pales in comparison to the bent neck lady. It's pretty clear that the writers think this ghost should be this season's version of her, but it just doesn't seem to have the same effect. Unfortunately, whereas the big reveal of the bent neck lady was shocking, even if you kinda saw it coming, this reveal is so predictable, it's really quite anticlimactic. And whereas the bent neck lady is even creepier once you understand her backstory, this ghost just seems entirely unthreatening after his origins are revealed. To their credit though, the children at Bly Manor are creepy enough on their own sometimes. Flora, portrayed by Amelie B. Smith, is obsessed with the phrase, perfectly splendid. Seriously, she says this at least 50 times per episode. And Miles, her brother, is seemingly obsessed with everything that is not perfectly splendid. Seriously, this kid isn't right, and Benjamin Evan Ainsworth does a fantastic job in showing it. Both kids are actually very well cast. They have this perfect mix of, I'm an innocent little child, but also I'm a creepy little shit. While the character dynamics between Danny, Jamie, Flora, and Miles are excellent, a lot of the additional characters feel useless, particularly Hannah and Owen. Scenes focused on Hannah and Owen nearly bored me to tears. In spite of their excellent performances, the plot of the story just doesn't seem to give a damn about them, and therefore, neither do I. Henry Thomas is also massively underused this season. Arguably one of the best parts of Hill House, Thomas is almost entirely relegated to a different set, rarely interacting with any of the other central characters. In an interview released by Netflix, showrunner Mike Flanagan explained that while Hill House was about family, Bly Manor is about strangers. It definitely shows, and it suffers for it throughout. Even as the series comes to a close, it's somewhat difficult to understand why the writers consider certain characters worthy of so much time and focus. The best part of the series comes in its penultimate episode, which honestly kind of reminded me of the Across the Sea episode of Lost, in which the origins and justifications for the story are just sort of vomited out onto the screen for an hour. That might sound like a criticism, but the episode is arguably the most interesting of the nine episode series, but it's just so disconnected from everything else that you're left a little confused as to why everything is being explained at the end. I, I have to say, I did enjoy these moments. It just felt disconnected. By the end, it becomes obvious that between the three stories that Flanagan is adapting here, it's simply too much to fit into nine episodes. If they had made each of these their own stories, I honestly probably would have liked it more. Overall, I enjoyed parts of Bly Manor. If you liked Hill House, you should check it out. But because of its Dr. Frankenstein method of story mixing and really a lack of quality scares, it's only a ghostly shadow of its predecessor. I'm going to give The Haunting of Bly Manor an 8.3 out of 10. Thanks so much for watching. If you liked this review, make sure to sign up for Rouse Reviews at the link in the description.